Okay. That I would fail right now if somebody gave me this test. Great. Do you remember the word that Phil taught us? for the nuns clicking and going in and doing no. the kneel. I remember the kneel, and I remember. I never remember the word it's ever. It's curtsy or. It's like, a, like an actual something cation or something word. Mm. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Dang. <laughs> he said, I watched the video back, and you, you say, like, specifically, you, you say the word, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can envision you saying, you say the word, and you go, cool, you learn something new every day. And that's how I know we didn't learn. Mm -hmm. But we tried to learn. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. I remember that it's a thing. Yeah. Someone ever started talking about the process of it. Yeah. I like, oh, yeah, but I know that. I know what that thing the is. The label. It's like people's <laughs> names. Yeah. Half the time I see people that, I'm like, I know you. Just can't remember your name. Somehow you got to get better at that. I do the same thing. And mm. it's like, do you ever do memory tests? Oh, afraid. Why don't we do that? Like, <laughs> that should be a thing that people do forever is like consistent memory tests. Yeah. I feel like people who do that, uh, I don't know, maybe they just age better and keep their mind sharper for longer. I agree. Now, I'm going to test me. me I memory test, I guess, on songs and music. Do you? Well, yeah, because I have to learn, like, a Oh, new if you have to learn how to play them or how to yeah. sing them, you're right. So, like, I have, I you test have good, my memory that way. Good memory recall? Of lyrics and. Interesting. Yeah, lyrics, uh, song chord progressions, guitar solos, and strings of numbers. Strings of numbers? Yeah. Like, like what? Like credit card numbers, passport you memorize numbers, that stuff? ID numbers, yeah. I'm way behind, dude. Mm. I don't do any of it. And I need to. I probably need to do like just memorize a, books of <laughs> right. physics and finance and business. Yeah, so. I have a lot of physics equations in that head up there. <laughs> there That's for sure. A lot of finance equations too. Yeah. But once they're memorized, you don't keep going, I guess. You know what Warren Buffett did that I tried to do that I just was like, man, this is not worth it, is he memorized compound interest tables. Ooh. Okay. So if you told them, you know, I'm going to give you a million dollars and compound it at 3% for 15 years, he could tell you how much it would be worth in 15 years. That's so weird. Boom, okay. Like, that's uh, weird. Yeah, that's it's weird. It's like the multiplication tables you learn in elementary school or whatever. It Just absolutely. Like they slightly look like more. It. They look like it too, where mm -hmm. you have like the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So. All right, go ahead. Give the shout out to Logan Paul. Or is it Jake Paul? No, Jake Paul's Celsius. Give mm -hmm. the shout out to Logan Paul. Or go, Logan, since you need more money. And need it. Yeah, gotcha. seriously. Maybe mm -hmm. you just need the validation because yep, he's, he's go. going through the ringer right now. Do you uh, keep up with the drama on that, dude? You know, I don't, I don't know the guy. Who said it one time? Tom Holland repeated someone else who told him that, like, if you don't have their phone number to text them about something you don't like going on, you probably just don't know them well enough to comment on their life. And it's like, that's true. It's very true. Yeah. That is, like, beyond true. I can comment on, like, what people... Or like talking and how they're hyping up like whatever's going on and they're like following it really intensely no your drink's good i like that it's you're pretty tasty good. like pff, dang i'm in but uh interesting yeah yeah i uh I, I'm, I'm ashamed of it i think a little bit where i'm not even that ashamed but it is i should be maybe um dude i, I like i don't follow any uh what's the word pop culture Pop culture, like ever. influencers, yeah. But these dudes, Jake and Logan Paul, yeah. always showing up on my stuff. On mm. TikTok. Okay. And I just catch it, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I know way too much about the inner workings of, of them, I suppose. Much more than I should. Okay. Which is a shame. Mm. I should be memorizing compound interest tables, but instead I'm watching Logan Paul and Dylan Danis mm. go at it on Twitter. Man, see, they're... I'm definitely guilty of that too. I mean, are you? But Netflix is my deal. I don't know anything about pop culture, but do you want to quiz me on the Netflix catalog and like TV series and huh. TV series? Series. Series. <laughs> let's, let's strike Spock that from the record, please. Tea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you got, you got a thing. I, how much time do you spend on Netflix, do you think? Mm, 
Probably two hours a day. Really? Right. You know, 45 minutes, I probably get an episode of something in while I cook. Yeah. So I have a TV right there. So while I cook and eat, like that's an episode. And then mm. if I go to bed, if I walk or do the Stairmaster, probably get an episode of something in. You do that at your house? At the gym. Oh, you watch on your phone? Yeah, I just Got it. click it up yeah. there. And well, that, that counts. That's, that's double action. That's working out. That ain't, that ain't Netflix. And- but I get it in and like, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. I could. I've tried listening to audiobooks Odd. while I walk and stuff, and I, I just I lose the walking along the way or the stairmaster. So, what do you mean? Like you you stop working hard? You yeah, lose the walking, I, I, or you lose the pod, or lose the audio. I lose the audio. Lose the audio. Yeah, I, I'm like not focused enough to really pick up on all the details. Yeah, and so like I don't memorize a lot of the stuff that gets said during those times, and mm. so. Mm. Netflix it is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I spend uh I don't spend as much time watching Netflix series and stuff, but I do have I do have things on my phone that track my time spent on apps. And unfortunately I do spend forty five minutes a day on TikTok, roughly as much on Twitter, mm. and then everything else is like nothing. But uh-uh. I, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. That's bad. That's time poorly spent in my opinion. Okay. Um so consuming content rather than producing it yeah is this the only content no you produce music what other content do you produce right now nothing really not there um this yeah this is something and we spend what two three hours a week on this Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah we got to balance that out man the amount you're consuming you got to be producing at the very least it's true so true. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So jumping in, there's a conversation that it just, it just keeps coming back to me because we haven't been able to dig into it enough. It's from two episodes ago, we were talking about risk, um, passing off risk. Mm-hmm. What was the term we used? Risk, risk transfer. Risk transfer. You know what's so funny is Megan's brother works for a company called Risk Transfer Partners, and they are an insurance brokerage group. And it's <laughs> so funny. It's so on the nose that you're just like, I, it's crazy. So um, I, uh, I saw an image on Facebook, and it had nothing to do with this, but it had a lot of truth to it. There was a grown woman and a grown man um, both looked sad and they were sitting back to back to each other. The implication being like maybe they had just gotten in a fight and they were like, we're going to separate and, and not look at each other. Yeah. But then inside of their, bo- their bodies were like lined out and inside of their bodies were two small children lining up, facing each other hand to hand, like trying to reach out and touch each other. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And it was like the little kid still lives within us all. And unfortunately, no matter how grown up we try to be, we are all still harboring that little kid who liked to go to mom and say, mom, can I go do X, Y, Z? And when mom said, go ask your dad, you go ask your dad and you say, mom, dad said I can go, you know, dad, mom said I could go do X, Y, Z. Is it okay with you? And they go, yeah, sure, go do it, right? And you've kind of manipulated your way into getting to go do X, Y, Z. Yeah. That is everywhere in our world. And I start with the most basic one because everybody understands this. Everybody who's owned a home or whatever understands this. When you go to the bank for a mortgage, you say, mommy, I would like a mortgage. And they say, go ask your dad. And so you go to Mr. Appraiser Mm -hmm. and you say, hey, bank said that this is, you know, mommy said that this is kind of in the range. Can, can Can I have this house? An appraiser says, well, yeah, sure. The house just so happens to be worth this much. Almost, almost right where you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Unless there's just something absolutely egregiously wrong with it. And then, boom, you get your mortgage. And, and mommy's not in trouble because daddy said so. And daddy's not in trouble because mommy was the one that actually, you know, produced it and gave it all out. And where does the risk go? You know, like, that is, that is one example of, many that I can think of, including TIC. What are your thoughts on that? Where do you see that in the world? Take a 
Hot Dots were just saying yes repeatedly to what you were talking about. <laughs> yes. 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 Should yeah. I keep going with more examples? Because I have so many of them. You do. Yeah, just keep going. Just okay. Keep the next one is the one from uh, The Big Short. Mm. Rating agencies. Yep. Yeah. Mommy, I want to sell these, these packaged up you know, mortgage loans, these CDOs. Mm. Well, go ask your dad. Okay, great. I'll go ask the rating agency dad. Dad, hey. How do these look? Can I go sell these? Yeah, whatever. Sure. And, you know, and, and boom, all of a sudden the kid gets what they want. And mm. so it seems like the world is just full of these checks where the government almost sets it up. Same thing with TIC hey, or, or FDA. Hey, I want to go, go sell these, these medications. Mm. Well, go ask, go ask Daddy FDA. And if Daddy FDA says it's okay, then okay. Mm. And, and same thing. Right, you're just manipulating the system, and every time there is a, every time you do that, you set it up for the child in the situation to tell daddy what daddy needs to hear in order to say yes, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. And so we're all just little kids manipulating our way through a system of, of checks and balances that aren't maybe paying attention as much as they should. And that's how risk transfer happens. Yeah. Right? They, everybody gets to wipe their hands clean. The bank gets to say, well, the appraiser said it was okay. The drug maker gets to say, well, the FDA said it was okay. The whatever they're selling, the securities world gets to say, well, the rating agency said it was okay. And all of a sudden, no responsibilities on them. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Can't be that crazy because it's how our whole world works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe our world is crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Music comes to mind what do you mean four hundred thousand dollars that's what it takes to get any song on the radio and get on the billboard basically any song just about oh uh, so you spend four hundred thousand dollars on a pr firm or marketing agency i'm not sure exactly what the right body is but you spend it with them they go make the deals with the radio the radio's like sure we'll play it and put it out and it's like a lot of songs are trash on the radio. Yeah, heck yeah, they are. But, you know, um, PR said, hey, this is the new upcoming artist. Here's your money. Radio's like, yeah, sure, it's great. And then people get this product that's really... Bought. Now, it, it, it's totally bought. And then you, they accumulate the mass that says, oh, yeah, look, we, look, we got 5 million plays. It's like, well, you bought 1.5 million, and then everyone else just had to listen to it three more times really understand it and check whether it's good or not and then all of a sudden you have this artificial validation that something's great um yeah that artificial stamp of approval mm -hmm. is very interesting you can buy your blue check mark now yeah you can and i did there you go <laughs> see you yeah 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 um interesting target the flip side it's like okay validation could have been that you had the four hundred thousand dollars to spend that's it. And that's where it started. Or the validation could have just could be as simple as like, I'm a real person. I get a blue check mark. I'm yeah. real. This is really me. So hmm. horrible at arguing for a side because I just think about both. Yeah. I just sit there and oscillate. But yeah. Risk transfer. I just think it's irresponsible if I'm being completely honest. It's like a uh, I always go back and maybe I've said this before. Skin in the game, Nassim Taleb. You mm -hmm. listen to it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Talks about um, back in the day, the architects slept under the bridge with their family after building it. Mm. Nobody does that anymore. The bank doesn't have to take full responsibility for uh, the outcome of the loan or full responsibility for making sure that the loan was of the right value and that the value of the house was important. Uh, the securities industry does not have to take full responsibility of what happens to security external to, you know, whatever the rating agency says it is. Um, the FDA, uh, or sorry, drug companies do not have to take responsibility for things that have been approved by the FB FDA. Mm. Specifically now, and people talk about this all the time, we won't get real crazy into it, vaccines. I don't know if that word's going to get this blocked on YouTube. Maybe it will. Maybe we just block that out. I don't know. We can bleep that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, uh, you, you're aware of the rule that's, that they instituted way back when, Reagan or Jimmy Carter or somebody, that said that 
companies making those could not be sued for the implications or whatever happened on the back end of them as long as they were approved. Yeah. Um, So it's like there are no architects sleeping under the bridges they built anymore. Mm. And because of that, bridges are ready to fall all around us. And who gets it? The child. The, the, or or the, the child is the one who, I guess, is advocated responsibility. Who gets it is like us. Mm. Like you saw it in the big short. The taxpayers are the ones that bail everybody out and make it all. Like we're the ones that end up having to suffer through the bad medications or the bad effects of the medications. We have to suffer through, um, you know, whatever the poor securities transactions occur. Like we end up paying for it. So at the end of the day, the risk transfers from external third party who gets an insurance policy to cover their bad decisions. The insurance company um, maybe has some relationship with the government where if they make too many bad insurance decisions, then the government covers them. And then guess who covers the government? We Us. Do. Yeah. So it's a really strange world. It's almost as if you think you're sticking it to the government, you just stick it to yourself. <laughs> yeah yeah that's it dude that's it we think um the risk gets transferred and handed off so many times that it's hard to follow the trail back to yourself it is i don't know if this is a risk transfer but it's popping up so here it goes the other night sitting talking and a couple people were arguing over paying school taxes if you're retired or if you don't have children yeah And they were like, well, I don't have children going to that school. Like, why would I ever pay taxes on it? Because they teach the people that drive next to you on the road how to drive and how to pay attention. (laughs) And the guy that checks you out at the store how to do enough math to even press the buttons to give you your change back. I was like, you're paying for those things. You're not just paying for literally the kid that's sitting in the school. It's you're paying for the world around you to be sophisticated enough to interact with you the way you want to. That's exactly right. Yeah. But it's so many layers removed from you yeah. that you don't even consider it. Mm-hmm. That's so what we are getting at here is second order thinking. That's what this is called. Okay. Is getting past the first order implication of like, yeah. I pay money and I, I don't, paid my I don't tax see the immediate. And, and I don't, yeah, and I don't see immediate. Yeah. And getting to, well, what's the implication of that? And this is something that you do really well, and it's why our conversations, I think, work as well as they do. But a lot of people don't do second-order thinking. Mm. They don't think. So so I talked, whatever, two weeks ago, and we've talked on the pod before about Chesterton's Fence. Mm -hmm. Chesterton's Fence is a second-order thinking practice, which is like you go up to the fence, and immediately you say, this is in my way, it should go. And at no point do you think, well, why is it in my way? Mm -hmm. You know, that's getting, training people to do that second order thinking is very, very hard. Um, And and I think, um, I think school taxes is probably the most perfect example of it. Because you're right. Like, do you want everybody around you to be dumb and underfunded? It's like paying for your security in a, subtle way or even more so you should be willing to pay even more money because what you really want are for them to get so educated that they solve your problems down the road totally hey man you're on the way to who knows alzheimer's cancer like yeah. old people get old and i'm not doing it Some, so <laughs> somebody's got to and yeah. they gotta get funded so yeah so pay for that yeah. like that's that's something that people miss big time let's strip away I like this exercise because it gets me into like how much influence. Anyway, here's the exercise. So you go through and you say, if no one else existed on the world, what would I have? Literally nothing. Like if if I only had what I've created, what would I have? And people are like, oh, well, I have a house. It's like, oh. Did you create that? You, you didn't even make the hammer that went in the other guy's hand that put the nails into the two by fours that someone else cut to go put into that building. And then they got like someone created a store where you even knew how to go get those. It just like it gets so big so fast. It's like, yeah, whoa, sell your horses. Like I'm self-made. It's like you can't be self-made. 
Not even close. Because if it was just ourselves here, there would be nothing to, there would be no hierarchy to get up to. There would be nothing to covet. There would, like, it, you would just be, yeah. That's such an interesting question. What is uniquely yours? Yeah. All, literally nothing. Nothing. Like, um, so there actually is a thing for this, and I forget who did it. Um, it's an economic practice mm. of the, your, your pencil. Your number two pencil. Okay. Think about how it got there. Who were the people that chopped down the wood? Who made the axes for chopping down the wood? Who did the lead? Who mined for the lead? How did mm -hmm. they end up institutionalizing, putting that all together? What about the eraser and the rubber? Who invented that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there were logistics in like transferring that thing. So that means someone had to invent exactly. the vehicles to move it. Someone had to take care of the roads that were, the vehicles were traveling on. Yeah. Someone had to teach the people how to drive. Someone had to even, like, I mean. All to get that stupid little pencil in your Yeah. Head. And you think, oh, it's just lead and wood. I could do that. Yeah. It's like, no. And, and the beautiful thing about the economics of it is, like, think of how all of that got to you, and it cost you 50 cents. Yeah. Cost you, like, six seconds of time. Yeah. Imagine how long it would take you if you had nobody around you, and you were like, okay, I'm going to make my own pencil now. Yeah. Um, that is a perfect definition of the complexity of the world mm. a perfect definition of the complexity of the world and yeah the more you think about it I, it's almost a good practice for somebody to sit down and be like okay how am i going to make that prime drink and then just start writing it out and mm -hmm. writing it out and writing it out it almost goes infinitely long yeah. what is that lemon lime mm -hmm. where who grew the lemon trees right yeah. where the lemon seed come from like yeah all the way through so how does this all relate to risk transfer um, I mean, so for these things to get there, there has to be some shared risk among everybody. Yeah. Um, That's exactly right. For the prime bottle to get here, there's shared risk between the plastic company, yeah. whoever did the lemon that's in there, uh, the brand itself. So what's the issue with risk transfer that we're talking about? Well, let's pretend. Um, let's pretend that prime is really, real. it turns out to be really, really bad for people. Mm -hmm. It's killing people. Yep. Who's responsible for that? That's the problem. Complex is that question. All of them have offset, all of them have found ways to offset their risk to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Those organizations, let's, let's just do one layer deep, even though it's definitely not one layer deep, but let's do one layer deep. Um, so, so for, well, let's show how complex it can get. Let's say that um, Prime turns out to be a culturally negative connotation bad thing. And everybody's like, oh, Prime's bad, that's gotta go away. Well, Prime, the brand's not gonna take that hit. They're going to pass it on to their branding and marketing consultant who they hired to tell them how to create a brand. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be the ones who owe a bunch of money and damages. But no way. No way are they going to do that. Yeah, they had legal they're counsel. Going to, to... They're going to pass it on to an insurance company who, um, you know, is like insured their, their uh, some umbrella insurance and insured their losses and damages and contracts. Mm -hmm. That insurance company, they don't stop there. Yeah. They have way too much insurance, so they go to reinsurance companies who insure over losses for the insurance company at some defined standard. And those reinsurance companies spread those amongst a bunch of different places, specifically with banks who help finance reinsurance companies. Mm. Those banks have reinsurance companies that finance losses on their end, or they have the FDIC if they're in the United States. And then who covers the FDIC? Taxpayers. So... Let's assume prime is what's killing people or whatever, right? Let's, let's assume something is killing people in that, in that front. Mm. Um, goes through all of those layers back to the people who are dying are paying the damages for the dying, which is insane. Yeah. So, okay, so that's the issue with risk transfer. That's it. The issue is the people who suffer the impacts pay. Double. Pay for, pay for it which is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody thinks 
down the road the second order thinking far enough to see that that's exactly what's happening. And part of it feels like the system is instituted that way because it knows that people won't track it all the way down to that level. You know? I think that, I mean, the amount of time that would take in itself today. Yeah, to like actually go through and come through and be like, oh, this is where it gets now. Yeah, and, and then find... I mean, I, I think at some point you could literally all the way backtrack to a congressional budget and say, oh, this line item is paying, you know, from tax income is paying for the damages that we suffered on prime bottles. Mm. Um, it's possible, but they make it oh, so yeah. convoluted and gray. What they try to do is make it so convoluted and gray that you pay for it without ever knowing that you paid for it. That is the ultimate risk transfer. Mm. So yeah. it's just wrong, man. And at some point it needs to be uncovered and somebody needs to. What you need is you need somebody with a lot of time on their hands who's really passionate about it to just like go do it. Like go build something like that. Go build a way to trace like, okay, um, People, what's, uh, what's something that I've seen recently that's just caused negative impacts? Oh, oh, I know a great one. Um, it is coming out now that microdosing. Um, yeah, is, psilocybin and... Yeah, psilocybin microdosing yeah. is harmful to your heart. There is a certain receptor that it triggers in your brain that leads to long-term heart damage. Right. And a lot of these people who are microdosing and... All of the people who are telling them to microdose, who's responsible for that when all of these people end up with heart disease? Hmm. Who? Yeah. You know who's going to end up paying for it? Taxpayers. Agreed. Here's another controversial one. Hmm. Marijuana. Yeah. As someone who's smoked for a fair portion of my life. Yeah. Not anymore though, but it, they're like, we haven't studied it for so long and it's so good for us. It's like, well, you're... Hi, of course you think it's good for you. <laughs> like, it's making you feel good right now, of yeah. course. Confirming evidence, by the way. People that have like two or three strokes are like, oh, it helps me like with my pain. It's like, maybe you wouldn't have strokes if you weren't smoking. Crazy, dude. Um, but they, I mean, where's their risk in promoting it if it makes them feel good? That's it. Um, ooh, now that kind of gets into free speech a little bit around like, now, free speech is, has a cost. Yeah. To the listeners. Yes, but not to the speakers. Not to the speakers. Yes. There's um, no skin in the game. Yeah, and I'd, I can't even begin to debate First Amendment and like what they intended whenever they wrote that and like how, like where the boundaries are, if there are boundaries, like all that. Um, but I know that whatever we say, like, cost people. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, that cost or what they invest in their life based on what I say has positive returns. But there's a lot of times that we're saying stuff that just has negative ones. Yeah. Or no returns. The power of words and the second order effects of words. Mm. And the power of platforms like ours right here. The things we say can sway people to go in a direction that may or may not be good for them. Mm. And if we don't accept the responsibility of that, then we can say whatever the heck we want. Right, and then you get these, like the ultimate downfall of lack of lack of skin in the game for free speech mm-hmm. is freaking affiliate programs. That's it, dude. Like, <laughs> like you just push whatever product on your audience you uh-huh. possibly can, because why not? Because what does it matter if it sucks for them or they hate it? Yeah. Like maybe it hurts your brand, and so maybe there's some skin in the game on just maintaining your brand, but A bit. yeah. That's it, man. So, so it's not, I think there is skin in the game for the micro doser who tells people to micro dose like them. Mm-hmm. At that point, it's literally just the, the blind leading the deaf or whatever, right? Yeah. It's like, you're just wrong, but it's okay because you're and, doing it too. And you don't know it. So you're going to be in the exact same boat. Like, yeah. like you will be the same one with heart disease as everybody else will. Mm. Um, it's when people, promote it that aren't actually actively doing it for the sake of compensation or something, you know, something like that. Um, 
like the guy who drinks coffee and then goes and promotes mud water kind of thing or like mushroom coffee or whatever, <laughs> you know, like it's disingenuine. And if you're not going to take that risk, like you, you are, you're, you're evil. That's evil. Yeah. Um, so the risk transfer there, man, I, I can't get it out of my head. People not taking responsibility for things mm-hmm. and not putting their name on things. Let's think about people who, um, dude, okay, from the 1800s, the invention of the limited liability company. That is risk transfer. Mm. That is, I don't want to be responsible under my name where if this investment goes wrong, people can sue me and I can lose my house and lose all my money. So I'm going to set up this thing that does everything I can do, but... If something goes wrong, I can't get touched. Risk transfer at its finest. Buyer beware. Buyer beware. Yeah. That's it. I don't know how I feel about that. Because, yes, I have to say, I employ some LLCs in my life. Me too. So, um, it's like... I don't know. I'm like, what are the questions that are coming up? Should I be solely responsible for the ideas that other people sit around and agree with me on? In the sense of like, if I'm making an LLC and you have investors that are like, yeah, I believe in this too. I mean, it's like, okay, the we're sharing the liability of either my time and money or their money. And then it comes in and doesn't work. Well, it's like, is it protecting from emotional responses? Or is it just a tool that can be used in positive or, and negative ways? Because it's like the positive is that if someone has a, an emotional response to like losing money in something that everyone believed in, we all had skin in the game. And it's like, oh, well, Okay, it's just protecting me from your wild antics, which those people are definitely out there. But then there's people that use it to say, yeah, I was just pushing this to, you know, for six months to two years to get something out in there and yep. accumulate a bunch of cash. And then, yeah, I'll drain it. Let it die. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I didn't care. And I don't lose anything. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't know how far it should go on taking liability. Meaning, let's say it's a good idea to build a bridge and the architect puts the, together the bridge. Mm. You know, do they sleep under it or do they not? That is the exact same question of do they set up an LLC where if the bridge collapses, the LLC goes away but they're fine? Or do they put them and their family underneath that bridge? And maybe it's not a question of what is morally or ethically correct, but. I think there's maybe something more persuasive to investors of like, I'm the architect. I, I see this bridge. I know this bridge needs to be here. I know it's going to work. I know it's right. I'll sleep under it to prove it. Hmm. I think there's almost an element of like. So okay. how do you do that without an LLC? Or like, what is the, what is the business equivalent of what you're talking about? Uh, you do it. Uh, you do it like under your name, I guess, like through your bank account. Hmm. Like, like instead of everybody wiring money into an LLC bank account, everybody wires money to you and you go do it. Hmm. If it passed through you, yeah. it's on you. Um, so you make it very personal. Hey, every personal loan I've ever gotten, I've paid off. So that makes That's sense. it. Yeah, because <laughs> you're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to do it. it yeah. You are much more inclined to make things happen when you're sleeping under the bridge, yeah, I think. And I, so this goes back to, I think that's true across everything we've talked about so far on risk transfer. All of those are true. Mm. You are much more likely to do the right thing and make it work right if you have the liability. Got the solution. Hmm. Let's just get rid of insurance companies. Yeah, and LLCs. And LLCs. Because here's the other thing. 
There is one. There is one, and I don't know what it is. It's Johnson and Johnson's uh, talk in baby powder. Do you know about this? No. It turns out talk in baby powder um, is really bad and causing all kinds of like cancers and stuff. Okay. They've had it in baby powder since like the '90s. Like we had it in our baby powder. Um, I know. I know. Right. Um, Johnson and Johnson, when they do new drug discovery things, they do it all through an LLC that's 100% owned by Johnson and Johnson. Mm. And so there's a big lawsuit coming down. And you know what happens? They close the LLC, pay out whatever cash is there into the lawsuit, Mm -hmm. doesn't go any further. Yep. That's it. That's asinine. Right? They are literally, they, who knows how many times pharmaceutical companies, banks, whatever, have ruined millions of lives and then just been able to and still be and still be living it's a very common practice it is yeah so getting rid of llc's getting rid of insurance maybe not even getting rid of insurances um i mean the venture capital gain and Growth by acquisition now is like so big, I think, because big companies can't, you know, they don't want to take the risk on trying these new it's exactly right. software technologies and all that. And they're like, it's much safer for us to just actually, we spend the R&D, but we don't implement those things. And then we can buy a company. That's exactly right. After it's established. And After then. it's established. And even then, it's like sometimes we just keep it as an LLC that's a, they always a subsidiary. They always do. And then operate it. And then and so if it doesn't work, then we can just be like, oh yeah, you know, we we bought it, but it gosh, it was a it was a lemon car, you know. I yep. gotta return it. Sorry guys. Yep. Exactly. Mm. That's exactly what happens. Um it's exactly what's happening, actually. So um there's there's just something about that risk transfer that bugs me. Yeah. Well, and, and then you see the social media companies that do it too and have it written into law. Like, hey, yeah, we're not responsible for anything that happens on the platform. The platform costs us. Mm. Like, okay. Is that good? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, that, I don't know either. Because that's like, I mean, if they're an issue, it's like cell phones and making phone calls are an issue. And like, true. Like, communication is if, an issue. It's the ability to communicate. It, like, At yeah, scale. Yeah. Yeah. To make someone know. responsible for that, I think is, I don't know, it's hard. I think that if you are an individual who works in a way that the work that you do must be signed off by somebody else mm-hmm. for whatever reason, mm-hmm. you're in the middle of a risk transfer process. Where whatever you did was signed off by somebody else, and that means it's okay. And whatever that, that somebody else does is probably signed off by somebody else, and that means it's okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about um, nurses and doctors, right? Nurses maybe make a decision like, oh, yeah, you know, this patient is looking this way, feeling this way. They, they write something up, they take it to a doctor and have the doctor sign off to say, yeah, give them this. They're absolved of risk. Mm-hmm. Doctor said so. Engineers. Uh, yeah, we want to build this building. We want to do this thing this way. Take it to civil engineer. Civil engineer stamps it off. Their risk is gone. It's the engineer's risk. Mm-hmm. Um, everywhere, dude. Everywhere. Everywhere. So. Got, so maybe it's, yeah, it's to get rid of insurance. I toyed with the idea of merging TIC and insurance before. That's interesting. And it was... I think I talked about it a while back, but it was where I was trying to draw this system on the board for like days and weeks and like trying to put it together. And I can't really describe it well to this day, but essentially it's a, if I do something that generally has to be signed off on, it's like there becomes a, a block that has my signature, my risk, my input, my investment on it. Could be even a dollar value that I have to tie up into it. Yep. And whoever signs off on it too also has to put that up. And then that's the TIC and the insurance right there. Yep. And until that thing is completely done or like proved out, like, I guess it's kind of like escrow. You're on the line. It is. It yeah. exactly is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's just 
to put all those three together and it's like boom so until that thing is totally done or like delivered or like someone else buys your block out of whatever was done you're on the line and it's just you it's interesting i wonder how much just i so i think of doctors again i just want to go back to the doctor example we have we have a few minutes um the doctor example is similar to this where the doctor signs off on something that needs to be done for a patient Mm -hmm. for the time being it's on them and they get paid a lot of money for that so do engineers Mm -hmm. so do engineers um so do board members so do investment advisors all of them sign off on something that they say is a good thing for somebody else because that somebody else does not want to take the responsibility of making the decision themselves Mm -hmm. They want to absolve themselves of even decisions about themselves. They want to absolve themselves of decisions for themselves to somebody else to not take the responsibility of the outcomes. That somebody else gets paid handsomely for that. And you know what they pay handsomely for? Error and omissions insurance. (laughs) Always. Error and omissions insurance. Doctors have something similar to that. Investment advisors, board members. Mm -hmm. Everybody that makes a decision similar to that. They got insurance. And like I said, then it goes. That error and omissions insurance, they buy insurance for extreme claims. And then, so you really, it may, really makes you wonder like how much money everybody keeps down the chain. All of them just keep a little bit mm-hmm. and then pay a huge sum to somebody else to take the rest, rest of it. And the risk transfer follows the money transfer really too. It's like I paid a doctor, whatever, $30,000, or I paid an engineer $30,000 for a stamp off a thing. He pays $25,000 for insurance. They pay $20,000 for reinsurance. And across the line, everybody's just keeping five grand mm-hmm. just to make sure the decision doesn't, you know, doesn't stay on them. They pay the rest out. So hmm. anyway, all right. Well, that's the time we have. Um, I think I got a little bit of that off my chest, but there's something here. Yeah, but absolutely. Anyway. All right. Cool. cool, man. Let's rock and roll. Let's get out of here. Everyone after today is going to be like, my goodness, what is going on in our world?